Hello and welcome to the Business Today show. I'm Udayan Mukherjee. COVID brought home the idea of clinical testing to most Indians in a way that we were not used to before. But now as COVID dies down, it still remains a market with enormous potential, but it's a market which is getting very, very competitive as a very large number of players from hospital chains to the digital chains and of course to the well-entrenched diagnostic standalone diagnostic centers are all vying for a piece of this growing pie. But, so to talk about this market, its dynamics and whether the growth of the last decade can be continued, uh, I have with me a true pioneer of this space, Dr. Arvind Lal, Chairman and Managing Director of Dr. Lal's Path Labs. Uh, Dr. Lal, it's wonderful to have you on the show and great to, sh great to see you today. Thank you, Din. It's my pleasure being here. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, would you say that this is a market now in transition post-COVID? Because COVID actually brought home, as I said, the idea of testing as we never knew it before. But now as COVID wanes, thankfully, is it a market in transition? And how are some of the larger established players actually dealing with the withdrawal of COVID and the move to a, a greater normalcy? So you are right, uh, the COVID uh, brought home the importance of testing, you know, to the center stage. And thankfully, this COVID wave is now uh, going to go off. And we, in our case, well, we are all already back to the pre-COVID testing levels, which is a good sign. And uh, therefore, we are looking at uh, the market in a very, very optimistic kind of a way. And in any case, well, it, it, this has been uh, reported earlier also, that the diagnostics industry is growing at a very healthy rate of 14% CAGR. So that is, you know, what, what is, uh, you know, going to come to center stage. And also the incidence of your NCDs or lifestyle diseases and the fact that, you know, more than 65% of the deaths are happening because of these so-called NCDs. And the infectious diseases also never leave India or Indians, you know, in peace. So... My, my feeling is that we are back on track now. It will take some time for everybody, India as a whole, to you know, reach the, the pre-COVID level. But talking about ourselves, we're pretty much there. Hmm. But did the fact that everybody, as you said, testing took center stage over the last couple of years, do you see that having come some kind of a positive rub off to other kinds of testing as well, now that it's become more of a habit, even uh, categories like preventive or wellness. Do you see that COVID testing actually paving the way for that kind of testing in a much bigger way going forward? So what COVID has definitely done is that it has brought in players who were not in so-called lab testing business before. So they jumped onto the bandwagon and why not? It was a national kind of an effort, it was a pandemic, etc., etc. And uh, uh, the fact can be gauged from, you know, the um, uh, revelation that, you know, when we were called in by the ICMR to start testing this uh, uh, the COVID, at that time, there was no private lab doing it. And out of now, more than 2,000 private, I mean, uh, uh, total labs, more than 60% of them, or nearly 1,400 of them, are private labs. So you, what you are saying is absolutely correct. The COVID has brought, you know, these uh, the, the testing to center stage and RT-PCR testing is not easy. So, so many people, you know, out literally out of the blue were able to, uh, you know, start testing for RT-PCR, that is molecular diagnostics, which are not simple tests. So, yes, from Stone Age, you did you know, reach uh, so-called Space Age. That's what has happened. Mm. Well, in a sense, that market has expanded, but what has it done to the level of competition inside uh, that market? Because we hear that many of these new players who are coming in are actually offering diagnostic services or testing at price points, which are much lower than what it was a couple of years ago. I mean, how does a market leader like Dr. Lal Path Labs respond to that kind of pricing? Well, you know, for, for us, this has always been a very competitive market. And, you know, keeping in view that we are there for over 70 years. So we have seen competition when there was practically nil competition. And after COVID, as we've just discussed, there is plenty of competition. And all those, those labs, you know, who are trying to do 
COVID testing would li like to do now also non-COVID testing. And as far as these, uh, the newer players have come in, etc., and the price points, that is the only place where they think that they can, you know, enter the market by reducing the price points. Some of those price points are so, you know, I mean, illogical, etc., that it is not going to last. And many of the digital, you know, e-commerce players, etc., they are in the habit of burning cash. So I think you leave it to the to the, the to the business to the trade you know to find the, the correct level, but I think this is a passing phase when people are over enthusiastic they will lower the prices they'll cut corners here and there, and uh, it it is not possible to maintain that you know in the long term. So that's my uh, view, Udin. But, you know, Dr. Lal, these are, as you very well know very well yourself, these are guys who run on private equity. They don't care about profits in the near term because the money is coming in, the money to burn is coming from somewhere else. Could they actually hold these kind of price points, unsustainable price points, as you mentioned, for many years? And Because that might have repercussions for your profitability as a company. What you are saying is, you know, theoretically correct. But at the end of the day, medicine is also a faith and trust business. You, know, you can't keep on selling 66 tests for 999 rupees, etc. It is, you know, also a, a, a business in which you are actually dealing with patients. So all that, if you take, look at it holistically, I think the answer lies somewhere in between. That these are, whether they are private equity partners, uh, venture capitalists, etc., etc., they will see through the game. The idea is to sustain it even for five years and uh, get out, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, make a, a good amount of money. I think that is a very short-sighted kind of a way of looking at the Indian diagnostics industry. Yes, it can win in the short term, but it is not sustainable. Mm. What about hospital chains? I mean, let's forget about these new players who have entered the fray. But what about the large national hospital chains who are now trying to do a large part of the diagnostic services themselves from their own pathology centers? Do you see them as more credible competition? Again, Udin, we people are used to competition, you know, 70 plus years. So these big hospital chains who are trying to, you know, uh, get into pathology, who are already in pathology, first of all, is a welcome sign because the size of the pipe becomes bigger. I don't have to expand on that. But the second thing which, you know, I would like to tell you is that we are far ahead. For example, I'm sure that you didn't know that we are the world's biggest testers of biopsies. 1,400 biopsies per day is our workload. In, in kidney biopsies, we are the world's largest through kidney biopsy testers. We are the only ones who have an electron microscope in this part of the globe. And last but not the least, these are the same very hospitals who even now send us their you know, most difficult cases. So yes, we will always be ahead of the curve as far as these private players are concerned. And not to forget the fact that we are an all India chain. And whereas these people have started from, you know, their own hospital, um, you know, where their hospitals are located, et cetera, et cetera. But that's, that's a good thing. And well, as we discussed earlier, it, they are bound to, you know, get onto the pathology business because sometimes this is the only business which is doing well in the entire hospital chain. Mm. So... Net net, you are confident that Dr. Lal Path Labs can continue to grow at the kind of pace that uh, you've grown over the last decade because you've been on a scorcher for the last decade, the kind of growth that you've exhibited. Uh, many of your investors who've made so much money from the Dr. Lal Path Labs stock price, they wonder whether the best days are behind and whether they can, your company can continue to grow at the pace at which it has grown over the last decade. Can you assure them that that growth will continue? Or because uh, the, your recent performance of the stock price seems to indicate that some of your investors are getting a little edgy. No, the investors are getting edgy because the so-called, and it's not a very nice word to use, the, the COVID boom is over. That was the writing on the wall. 
Now, you cannot keep on having a pandemic throughout the year, and we realize this, you know, I think the earliest. And we came back to pre COVID le levels much earlier than the, the other people did. But again, since, you know, medicine or healthcare is a faith and trust business, and because something was there for so long, and those patients that suffered, for example, cancer patients su suffered, renal transplant patients suffered, uh, the cardiac patients suffered, etc. So they are slowly getting out of their hole. And of course, it would be a, a very nice thing to say that, yes, I can assure them, but I'm pretty confident that, well, we are back on the, on the curve, the pre-COVID curve, and it will be, uh, you know, uh, much better than even before. Okay, great. Now, let me ask you, you said that there are now 2,000 players doing lab testing. Do no. you see this market or this business being RT ripe for more consolidation? I ask, I ask RT-PCR tests, of course. But given the mushrooming of testing labs, do you think this market can do with a lot more consolidation? Because you yourself made a significant acquisition in Suburban uh, some time ago. Do you see a lot of inorganic potential, even from your perspective, Dr. Lal's perspective, in times to come, for the, so that the market can become less fragmented? Yeah, so the, the market size right now is about 300,000 labs in India. And they are mostly in the unorganized sector. As far as Dr. Lal Path Labs is concerned, well, we have a very good presence in North of India, Central India, East India, and now Western India. So only strategically, you know, speaking, South is the place where, you know, we would like to be slightly better off. But I would, as we're talking right now, I would like to inform you that our reference lab in Bangalore is doing very well. So we have now, this is the fourth, you know, uh, 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 reference lab. First was in, in Delhi, in Rohini, what we call the National Reference Lab. Second one was in Kolkata. Third one is Bombay. And the fourth one is Bangalore. So we are in our own manner, which is, you know, organic so far, majority of it in South, is, you know, actually going according to plan. So I think we are, we are very happy with our uh, foray there. And we wouldn't, you know, mind too much, or bother too much about smaller players, etc. Yes, but if we have, you know, some like-minded person who is more, you know, uh, into quality, may not be that very big, we are certainly, you know, going to have a good look at that player. Mm. You mentioned uh, that the large part of the market is unorganized still, which takes me back many decades to where... He uh, Dr. Lal Path Labs was when you st joined the business back in the late 70s. Uh, you know, I, it's not a nice term to use, but it was probably another mom and pop diagnostic chill, uh, lab. Uh, now, sitting there, did you ever envisage that you would be running such a large national chain of diagnostic, uh, specialty di diagnostic labs? Uh, uh, was it beyond the realm of imagination sitting there today? And at what point did you begin to dream that big? So then I joined in the uh, latter part of 77. And within six months, you see, because my father started this lab in 49, people started saying that, well, the, the son is better than the father. Something which did not agree with me. You don't want to be told that, you know, your dad was not so good as you. But the fact of the matter is that we knew that we were the best lab as far as testing was concerned. And in, in a couple of years' time, we made that possible. And also, uh, you know, the anything which was not done, and those days were manual days, you know, where you used to pipe it through the mouth, you know, and those pipettes and uh, burets, et cetera, et cetera. So we have graduated from there, created our own reagents, do mixing and, you know, making your own recipes. And also brought in the, the, the first auto analyzers, and whether they were hematology or biochemistry or immunoassays like thyroid. I mean, you have to remember that we are the first ones who brought thyroid tests into the private uh, you know, labs in India. We were the first ones to coin the word lipid profile by bringing in HDL cholesterol. We were the first ones to uh, get a LIMS lab information management system or any kind of computers in healthcare we introduced first in 1986. So we have lots of firsts, et cetera, et cetera. So we knew instinctively. The answer to your question is that, yes, I always knew that we are the best and we are capable of doing that 
that big. Now it takes time. As I say, Rome was not built in a day and, and the rest is history. So it took us some time to reach there, but we reached there. Mm. Yes, you did. But, you know, you mentioned your father and the circumstances uh, around which you had to take over the business. Uh, I mean, they were tragic and shocking and so dramatic. I mean, it's rarely that one asks about a father's demise. But uh, would you say the circumstances and the way it happened was actually a turning point in your life? The, the turning point was that I lost many things in a, in a second, you know. I lost my dad, I lost my younger brother, I lost, you know, the, the person I was engaged to, and I also could see that the business would go down if, uh, you know, I was not careful. So that took some guts, but then, you know, is, uh, you know, you got to uh, get over that, and you have to have a lot of resilience inside you, and uh, that was there. I've been trained in the, the best places, Armed Forces Medical College, I was a faculty member there also. That it is from there where I came from, uh, AFMC in Pune. So I knew it is going to take time. And it took time. But the satisfaction is there that whatever you see in India right now, which is second nature, for example, vacuum tennis, the, the blood which you, uh, with which, uh, you know, uh, you are, the, the blood is taken from a patient, it's not taken by syringes and needles, as you remember. It's taken by tubes. Well, I introduced that in 1990 in India. And uh, it gives me great satisfaction to hear that, you know, now more than 50 crore uh, vacutainers are used, uh, you know, uh, in India. So there's a lot of satisfaction which comes in. And yes, you show me one person with in, the, in, in front of whom challenges were not there. Of course, the settings may be different. The, you know, your uh, something else may have happened. It may be a different field. Uh, it may be journalism. It may be something else. But I think everybody has, you know, gone through uh, it's, uh, it's it, it, their, their own kind of challenges in life. So I went through, thank God I succeeded. Yeah, you have and you've made a remarkable chain out of Dr. Lal Path Labs. But even now, do you ever feel a tinge, a twinge of regret that you could not become a pilot as your dream was, a fighter pilot, as you set your heart to be at a, as a young man? <laughs> That's, uh, you know, a very nice... Uh, Question, the answer is yes, regretfully, yes. But, you know, the, the loss of a naval fighter pilot to the Navy is, I think, medicine's gain. So, um, uh, I, I, I actually, I can even now identify any military aircraft in the world which is still flying. But that's not the point. The point is that, well, I, my, my life, you know, is much more challenging. And uh, I would like to, now we are doing all those tests which you can't even think of for the pilots of the Air Force and pilots of all the private airlines, etc., etc. So it gives me a lot of satisfaction. You know, the two lines are completely different. But yes, the, the, the lure of the uniform was there instead of a white uniform and a person who knows a lot, a lot about aircraft, which means the, the guys in the blue. Actually, I wear uh, an olive green uniform. I'm, I'm an honorary brigadier. So just see how what life is, you know. Uh, a white uniform and <laughs> navy, knowing mm. too much about the Air Force and actually wearing an uh, olive green uniform. So that's what life is. At this point, a quick break on the show, but we shall return with Dr. Arvind Lal in just a minute. Don't go away. This guy had no idea that he was from a wealthy family until one day in school when he was writing an essay on reliance for a business and management course. And he was in standard 11 then. Yes, we're talking about Mukesh Ambani's son, Akash Ambani. The 30 year old is now the director of Reliance Geo after his father stepped down from the position. Mukesh has now handed over the reins of his company to his eldest son, Akash. So apart from being an heir of Mukesh Ambani, let's learn who Akash Ambani is. 
Akash is a car enthusiast. His go-to ride is the Bentley Bentayga, which is priced at around 4 crore rupees. His car collection includes the Mercedes-Benz S-Class W220, the W221 Mercedes-Benz S-Class, Range Rover Vogue, BMW i8, Mercedes-Benz G63 AMG, Rolls-Royce Phantom drophead coupe. The price of these cars range from 1.5 to 8 crore rupees. Akash is an avid cricketer and football player. He represented his school, Dhirubhai Ambani International School's football team for over 5 years. He's a co-owner of IPL team Mumbai Indians and is an Arsenal fan. He's also involved in the Reliance Foundation's partnership with the National Basketball Association aimed at training 1 million youth from India in basketball. Akash loves collecting sports Welcome back you're watching the business today show I've been in conversation with Dr Arvind Lal chairman and managing director of Dr Lal's Path Labs. Well we spoke briefly about private equity players uh, earlier in this conversation uh, you know that is another interesting thing about Dr Lal because you dealt with or engaged with private equity players so many years ago when PE was not like so fashionable nearly as fashionable as it is today. What was your experience of dealing with private equity players serially over many tr- tranches of funding and what differences do you see with what is going on today with the private equity funding of many of these digital enterprises or unicorns Well I can only talk about our field which is you know healthcare and at that point of time Westbridge Capital who were youngsters you know they were in their 20s in their late 20s when I met them and uh, they showed so much of interest and i was actually bowled over and uh, i knew to get by self i mean all all doctors are basically they know what they are doing but they know only about their own profession i didn't know much about finance i did not know much about private equity i did not know how to grow the business outside the lab etc etc so that is where they came in handy and and i'm extremely grateful to them that they you know brought in the necessary changes of course intuitively i knew what what had to be done ultimately uh, you know the the services of a good ceo or later on a managing director were always required so we hired a very nice ceo almost at the same time and uh, dr manchanda has been with us now for 17 years and uh, so uh, we were very happy that you know that uh, he could look after the the part which basically as you know outside the lab and guys like us and my wife uh, we looked inside the lab and and i think we have made a success of it it's a success story and how to deal with people and what are the plus points of the other people who are not like you so that that's what uh, you know uh, i think our plus point was mm. so you would say your succession plan is in place uh, i mean uh, Dr Lal's Path Labs does not rely solely on you continuing for many 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 more years at some point you will hang up your boots presumably but Dr Lal Path Labs the story will continue with or without you Absolutely uh, we have a very strong succession uh, you know plan in place So it's not good to be it's not one person dependent and okay. being from the background I am so nobody is indispensable as you know Yeah. So, uh, you know, we spoke about competition from hospital chains and private equity players earlier, but I wanted to ask you, you know, you would be the best person to say this. Which is the hospital chain in India who you have some respect for, who are ethical, who do it like you do, uh, who may be competing with you, but you hold them in high regard? See the hospital providers and uh, vis-a-vis their, you know, pathology for a so I'm separating that so i have a very healthy respect for you know sure. uh, the chains like uh, max apollo fortis medanta my neighbors uh, here and many like them so there is something which you know they have actually brought the 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 standard of indian hospitals you know to a very high degree there's no doubt about it and many of them can boast of you know their 20% of the clients or patients they have are from foreign countries medical tourism etc so i think the the indian doctors have actually proved you know what they 
what you always suspected and what you have already heard. And secondly, the price points at which we are doing, carrying out those operations vis-a-vis -vis or those procedures, you know, in Western countries is truly remarkable. Now, beyond that, if you still want them to be 20% off CGHS price or ECHS price, well, that's a completely different story. And, uh, you know, we, we'll have to, uh, uh, you know, do that. And, and in fact, we, uh, I was the, the chairman of FICI's healthcare committee when we formed or we did a, a pilot study of uh, something like nine hospitals, uh, you know, these big chains inclusive, and two government hospitals. And we found that the cost at which they were doing a, a particular uh, procedure was no less than the the uh, the big private hospitals. So the the price of a procedure should be known to the government, and that is what mm. from the private sector we are saying. And then you build up the other costs, and it, there should be a differential kind of a pricing also, like the Indian Railways model. Everybody is going from point A to point B, but you are not paying the same price. You're paying something extra for better service, unreserved second uh, class, uh, you know, first class first, sure. chair car, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So similarly, I think the, those price points would be different uh, in bigger hospitals, and that is what we would uh, hope and uh, you know pray that the government also looks into these very, very minutely. Dr. Lal, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. I wish you even greater success in the years ahead and thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Adhyan. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much. India's unemployment crisis has been the talk of the decade. Taking this into account, PM Modi has pushed to recruit 10 lakh people in mission mode within the next year and a half. But given how deep the crisis run, will it be enough? Frustrated job seekers, criticism by opposition parties and lacks of unfilled positions in central ministries. All of these factors led Prime Minister Modi to tweet about the recruitment of 10 lakh people. Earlier this year, students and cops clashed in Bihar and Uttar Pradesh because of alleged irregularities in railway recruitment. Moreover, COVID added to the crisis. India's joblessness peaked at 23.5% in April 2020, and India fared worse than even Bangladesh, Mexico and Vietnam. Only 40% of Indians were employed or looking for work, compared to the global average of about 60%. Added to that, India has 130 lakh active job seekers with only about 2 lakh vacancies. This is forcing youth to look for menial jobs or move abroad. The job situation is such that educated people like business graduates, law graduates and engineers are forced to apply for low-skilled and low-paying jobs or stay jobless. Till March 2020, there were 8.72 lakh vacant positions in the central government ministries and departments. 2.5 lakh in the civil... Oh, sorry! Hame to loot liya apni party walo ne Baghi tevar walo ne Shind ke bawalo ne Hame to loot liya apni party walo ne Baghi tevar walo ne Shind ke bawalo ne नजर में गुस्ताखी दिल लगा बगावत में साजिशें देख कर हम फंस गए मुसीबत में एक नाथ को लेके एक साथ चले धोखा ऐसा मिला लुट गए शराफत में कमल के जाल में जा फंसे हो आपत में सब ये कहते हैं हम मिट गए सियासत में वही वही पे कयामत हो हम जिधर जाए मुस्कुराते हुए हम कई काम कर जाए बागी तुम्हारे काम मेरा ऐसा कर जाए देखते रह जाओ तुम सरकार हम बनाए समझ में कुछ नहीं आता कि हम किधर जाए शेर को पाला था वो बिल्ली जैसे डर जाए हमें तो लूट लिया अपनी पार्टी वालों ने 
बागीते वरवालों ने शिंद के बवालों ने हमें तो लूट लिया अपनी पार्टी वालों ने बागीते वरवालों ने शिंद के बवालों ने हमें तो शिंद ने लूटा भाजपा में कहा दम था मेरी कश्ती ही डूबी वहां जहां पानी कम था India today. Hi there, good evening. You're watching India Today TV. I'm Sneha Mordani. Let's get started with the headlines. Supreme Court blames, blames BJP Neta Nupur Sharma for profit remark. Top court says Nupur must apologize to the nation, blames her for the Udaipur beheading. Sensational 2611 linked to the Udaipur beheading. Killers paid 5,000 rupees to get a special 2611 number plate for their bike. CCTV footage of how the killers fled has been accessed. Mahare showdown erupts after Shinde Sarkar vetoes Udav Metro shed plan. The former Chief Minister of Maharashtra appeals to protect the environment. Hyderabad painted saffron as BJP chief holds a massive road show. Prime Minister Modi and Amit Shah to be in Telangana for the big BJP executive meeting over the weekend. Prime Minister Modi and Russian President Vladimir Putin speak for the fourth time since the Ukraine war broke out. Prime Minister reiterates the need for dialogue and diplomacy.